I think the main thing is recognizing that you aren't alone. Everyone's got an issue in their door here. So many places across the Motu are experiencing devastation. They're experiencing loss of kaimwana, especially of Taonga species in their own mahingakai. As rangatahi, we often feel like we can't make an impact and it's letting go of that and just giving everything a go. About four years ago, we really started to notice a decline in uh, seaweeds and we began a, a couple of small programs with local schools, just inviting them to come in and explore their ocean forests and to really shine a spotlight on how incredible they are and how vital they are in our ocean ecosystems, but how easily overlooked they are. One of the schools that we worked with is Te Kura Kaupapa Māori o Ngā Mokopuna. And they said, well, why can't we try and grow some seaweed for us? And at that stage, we didn't really know how to go about doing that. But we said, yep, we'll get behind you and we'll begin this project. A group of us were fortunate enough to go to a free diving course. They taught us some breathing techniques and to equalize so we can go deeper underwater to plant seaweed. We had to get the spores, the pua atua, inside the seaweed and send it off to Niba Lab to be grown. And we waited till they were one to two centimetres so we could take them out to the sea. We went out to Warsaw Bay and we dived down with our kunos, our basket. And we lay our rocks down somewhere so the strong current wouldn't push them away. When we were beginning the education program, we wanted to give them a sense that they could take action and that they could be agents of change in their local harbour. And I think they very much feel that and they feel empowered in that way. It was the first time for me going diving. I was a bit nervous, but it turned out to be pretty good. And now it's uh, a hobby of mine. I just love going diving. It's like my safe place, I guess. <laughs> like, I just love going and see some fishes, seaweed, just anything, honestly. It's a great experience for me. We've been to check on them a couple of times and they grow really long in such a short amount of time. One of the other really wonderful things about the project is that those kids see themselves as those scientists. They see themselves as people doing the restoration. I was actually thinking about this the other day, about a marine biologist. I was thinking of what would my future be if I did do it. I'm quite excited to think of that. I really love going into the ocean and exploring heaps of stuff. Marine biologist is definitely one of the professions that I'm looking at. The hope is, is that you do this groundwork, you build this knowledge, and then you end up with a really scalable methodology that can be utilised and picked up by other community schools, iwi, hapu, whanau. We're really working quite hard to share as much as we can about what we're learning down here. The thing with the students that I discovered is how intuitive they are. They ask the right questions and they very quickly see through the narratives that don't add up. So, New Zealand's coasts and oceans are under pressure and the way we manage our environments 
is fragmented or inconsistent. In other words, it's broken, it's not joining together very well, and you know this. Marlborough Girls College was kicking off environmental sustainability courses and asked me to come and chat to the classes around the Marlborough Sounds. I talk about the coastal space and do field trips and try just to you know, answer questions or, or pose questions. I don't know of any other schools in New Zealand who use the Education for Sustainability Standards as a core for a course. Most schools will use some of the standards in a, in a science um, course or in a geography type, social studies type science course. In 2018, I elected a course here at Marble Girls College, which was sustainability. And for me, biology, although it was my favourite subject, it was actually my worst subject. And I never thought that I'd actually be able to make a career out of it, although that's what I loved. And then this made me realise there was a lot more out there than just sitting in a class learning. And now I'm currently working out at Lutmar Lodge in the Marlborough Sounds as a marine educator and guide. There was a group of originally eight of us that decided to do our project for the year on getting better marine protection for the Marlborough Sounds. We soon discovered that the Marine Reserves Act was slightly outdated and we came up with the idea that maybe we would propose that Marlborough gets a Marine Guardians a bit like the special legislation that's been put in place in Kaikoura so they can go in as a local level and put in place protected areas throughout the Marlborough Sounds. We actually did get the support from the council for this and it did get taken to government level, but unfortunately so far nothing has happened. But this really sparked my interest in wanting to protect our environment. And from there that led me on the journey to go study a Bachelor's of Biology and Environmental Science at Canterbury University. We've had lots of successes with students going and training in different sciences. And then we've got some students that haven't gone into anything environmentally, but have gone away with amazing skills that are lifelong skills. OK, so what is ecosystem-based management? It's holistic and inclusive. So we're not just taking one little section, we're looking at it overall. Okay. The EBM is a tool that you can actually incorporate and use quite easily in all different levels. All these different things that we need to do you know, like we need to bring in Makurunga Māori and for many teachers it's quite scary, they don't know about it. We are adapting to the changes so we're keeping on top of our research so that we can change it depending on what's happened. Yeah. Okay. Once we started learning about it we realised this was quite an integral part of our future and the way that we're going to, going to be managing our ecosystems. Getting the future generations making those connections that you're not just looking at one ecosystem by itself, you have to be looking right from the mountains to the sea and everything in between. People didn't really think about that in the past and I think um, going forward it's something that we're going to have to incorporate um, into our future legislation.